Hello, I'm Stephen, this is Mick, and today we're going to be talking about the Hilltop Hood song, Stopping All Stations. Before we begin, we just want to say that this is only a discussion, there are no right or wrong answers, these are just our thoughts and opinions which can and will change, neither of us are experts on anything, we are just two dudes talking. So today we're doing something a little bit different, we're going to take a look at a song and kind of break down the lyrics and look at the meaning and story and messages within the song. You'll know that uh, I tend to give out a song suggestion at the end of all each of these episodes. And I do that because music to me, there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of layers to it. Initially, the thing that hooks you is really just the instruments, the um, arrangement, that kind of thing, the catchy beat. That's what gets you. But when you really cling on to a song, when you can listen to it over and over again, you find that there's always new things you're learning. Like there's always another depth, another level to the song. And I think this is one of those songs that has many depths to it. Like the beat gets you the first time you listen to it, but then you listen to the lyrics and you take them in and then you interpret them. And then you go through new experiences in life yourself and that puts them in a new perspective. And I think this is one of those songs where there's a lot to take out of it. So even though it's a short song, I think we can go a good hour on this one. All right, Mick, you're the one who actually introduced me to this song and you're the one who suggested we do this as a topic. So why don't you take us through, why did you want to do this? Why did you want to talk about this song? Yeah, so I remember this song being released uh, in the mid-2000s and um, as, as a, a teenager, I caught the trains a lot uh, in Melbourne. Uh, so sort of used to live in Bayswater, catch it all the way to Ringwood. So a bus, train, bus, either either both ways. Used to catch a bus a lot or go to trains to Box Hill and visit friends and things like that. So train stations were definitely an area where I uh, w- was in that environment quite a lot as a teenager. And I think what it taught me is just how many different walks of life there are. And, uh, you know, things aren't as always as simple as, as it seems when you first uh, meet or look at someone. Uh, and I think this this song actually shows all those layers and depth. Um, and also I think it's a really good song for this show. Um, I think what they did well uh, Hilltop Hoods in this is not only the way in which they do beats is is really great, but um, I think they brought three, uh, few, you know, three, in this case, three different, very different perspectives and neither one is uh, clearly, uh, I mean, there is a kind of clear wrong that, uh, action that's happening in here, but if you really listen to the lyrics and, and understand each of the perspectives, you really understand that um, life is messy and that, uh, yeah, it's not always pretty, but it's not always easy to uh, enforce a black and white blame on someone. Um, and sometimes people do things that might surprise you as well. So I think it's, a, yeah, from that point of view, it's a really good song. Um, and it also is a song about uh, there's a particular line in this song that I think may be overlooked at times that actually relates to uh, how the environment can shape people. Um, so, yeah. So that's guess why I chose the song. I just love it. Yeah. Ever since I first heard it, it was just like, yep, that's a, and every time I hear it again, it's like, I just see so many different ideas and layers and perspectives to it. So I guess today it's going to be interesting because navigating a song, uh, particularly uh, without, uh, singing to it's going to be uh, hard, but, um, um, and then also just the interpretations, it's always tricky to know exactly what they are, how the artist interpret it. Cause I think you're right about songs. Um, for me, it's a song is connects to people because of the experiences they have generally gone through or maybe going through. Um, and that's, I think when it can resonate with a whole bunch of different people and each person sort of takes a different interpretation, even if the original artist meant it a certain way, it can be slightly slanted. And that's what I think is so great about songs is an artist can put it out there at that point in time, they meant something and they might not even fully understand it. All the different interpretations people can take from that based on uh, similar experiences. Mm. Agreed. This probably goes without saying, but I should have mentioned it at the top. Probably go and listen to the song if you haven't heard it yeah. before listening to this. I mean, you can try and follow along and we'll do our best to explain what's going on, but yeah, easiest thing is just go and listen to the song. It's only, uh, what, three minutes and something, I think. It's a very short song. And, yeah, that'll give you a better picture about what we're talking about, hopefully, and a better understanding. So I want to, before we go further, just outline the story, the structure of the song and the characters within the song, and then we'll start picking it apart from there, I think. So the song itself is 
there's only three main verses and then there, there's choruses in between them. In the song, it's a scenario where there's three people catching a train and then an event happens on the train and you see it from each perspective, which is really cool. And you already started talking about this. It was, it's really good to see the same thing happen, but from different perspectives and to understand, okay, even though this person sees it a certain way, maybe someone else sees it a different way in that, yeah, there's broader implications in life and like anything you can take it. You can look at anything that happens in your life and say, oh, hang on. I saw it from my perspective. What about if I look at it from another person's perspective? What message do I get from that? So that's how the song is structured. Let's talk about the first verse then. So each verse actually is from a different person's perspective. The first verse is from, uh, they don't have names, so I just called him an old man, the old man's perspective. Do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, old man's perspective and uh, yeah, what I you will. see there? Um, so one thing I think I'll just uh, say before we go into the perspectives is another interesting thing about this song is it actually got redone by the band a year later. Um, so the original song was on their Hard Road album in 2006. Their 2007 release of this song is on their re Hard Road, but it's restrung. So that was with the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra. So you've got a hip hop band playing with an orchestra, which is a very interesting take. And they did a great job with that as well. Um, and I think at the end of the show, we'll show the, they changed the uh, way in which they presented a third perspective. And um, that that's very interesting in itself. You don't often see that about songs. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I meant to say that, but I did, I, I forgot that. Yeah. The, there's two versions and that last verse is the only real difference, the major difference between the two, but it changes the, the way you understand the song so much. So we will talk about that a bit further on. So going back to uh, what we're going to call the old man. <laughs> if you've got a better name, we can. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. I think the old man, um, I'm getting close to being one of them. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, I've, I've highlighted a few things here and I'll just sort of maybe start providing a bit of an overview of the character. So we've got a war veteran, um, uh, you know, he's on the pension, he's got dementia, he's half blind. Um, he rides a train cause he's unable to have a car license because of those health implications. Um, and that, uh, he's having to deal with swiping electronic cards. So I guess around the world, uh, probably around about this point in time, maybe slightly earlier, they introduced, uh, you know, I think they now call them my keys, but back then they'll, a different thing where you had to, you know, load up a car with credit. You'd have to then swipe that in to get into the train station on the bus and you'd be charged based on that, whereas that changed from the old cash and having a ticket that you'd get given to you by someone over over the counter kind of thing. So um, you can imagine at this point in time, sort of mid-2000s, um, and I really like this, caught up in the age of computers, chips and satellites, that, term, that, that, that line sort of signifies this person trying to deal with the change in the world, being such an old person, and... Uh, I think often they're easily forgotten about and their contributions to society, I guess, is easily forgotten about. So if you think of him being a, uh, a war veteran and having to try and deal with catching the train with health implications, dementia is obviously a difficult one to deal with. And then, uh, I mean, it would be early on set, I'm assuming, but um, and then trying to just keep up with the way in which you're required to actually go and catch public transport. So... Um, I think that's probably a good way to first describe the the character. Yeah, even there's a line I don't think I don't have it here, but something like he gets fined because he doesn't have the correct change for the train. Like yeah. all these things are kind of working against him. You see, he's already set up. He's a veteran. He's a pensioner. He's got the mention. You find out that his wife's passed. Like all these things, and then he's having to deal with a changing world that maybe he's not prepared for. And then from that that line specifically, where it says he gets a fine, it's like. The, the other people aren't even trying to help him. It's like, can't you see that this man is struggling and you're still going to find him because he doesn't, he, he's not correctly, he doesn't have the right amount of change to add up, whatever it is. Well, so that really stands out to me. The only other thing I had written here for him is that he sounds out of time. Like the world isn't really set up for someone like that. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's changed around him. You know, maybe back in the day he was, well respected he again he's a war veteran so he came back maybe people respect him a lot more but now you see him and he's yeah he just stands out and he doesn't really fit into the world around him and that's it's quite sad <laughs> that specifically hearing his perspective so 
even in in that first verse you hear that a lady boards the train which moves on to actually our second verse and from the second perspective and again i don't have a name for her so i just called her woman yep so maybe do you want to start us talking about what kind of stood out to you in this second verse where it was talking about the lady's perspective so okay yep uh there's one thing before i go into the lady's perspective uh that we probably need to just quickly cover that was um uh, still in that first verse about the old man. And that's basically there's a perspective of him seeing the old lady come into the train. And so this is uh, where I think uh, when we first take our first perspective or our first, um, what do you call it, judgment of each other uh, can be off tone. So you'll see that in uh, in the lyrics it's sort of like um, uh, he, he, he describes her as a lovely lady who boards, looking tired and half awake. She says something as she passed, uh, as she passes him, and um, basically he can't really hear it. So at this point, his perspective is, "Oh, this is a lovely lady. She looks pretty tired, and all the rest of it." And um, and basically, she says something to him, and he doesn't really know what it actually is, um, but he doesn't feel the way in which it's sort of presented. He doesn't feel that there's anything that um, that is really an issue. Um, so that's the first perspective that's getting introduced of another character and then there's the third one which is uh the young people are, uh, are board a train which is the third verse so the young people board the train and they put a knife to him and, and they're and they basically uh in the position ready to take his money so i just wanted to introduce these at this point because i think these uh his perspective about what's happening here changes from as we change characters and i think that um yeah it's good to sort of introduce those early yeah very very good point. I want to actually, you're right, we should break down. Okay, these are the key points within the song. So the old man boards the train, then a young woman boards the train. He sees her, he smiles at her. She says something back, which we don't quite know what that is yet, but we'll find out later on. And then a young man boards the train with his friends and they, he ends up putting a knife to the old man's chest. And then we'll cover that in the third verse, why and, and what he wants from that. But they're the main key points in the song. Would you agree? Is there any other things that... Yes, yes, in. yes. So when he puts the knife, he's after money. So I think we just make sure why he's, why he's doing that. He's not just violently attacking. He's actually after money at that point. But, yeah, I think that's important to – yeah, you've done well to summarise that, I think. Okay. So with that said, then on to the next character, the second verse, the woman that boards the train. Yeah, so I think the woman that boards the train, it sort of starts out sort of describing that she's been working at night So um, and she's been – what's interesting is it says she's been uh, drugged and drunk. So I like the word drugged here. So uh, someone that's an addict would take, like you would say, oh, they've taken drugs. But here it's like drugged um, and you'll sort of see why. So she's done stripping on a pole. So you can see, okay, she's a stripper. And probably the reason why they use word drugged here is uh, when they do this kind of work, they're sort of manipulated in different ways um, and and managed in different ways. And so um, in order to deal with uh, often, often, I mean, different people have different takes on this, but often to deal with the, what they're actually doing as a job, they'll take, uh, they'll be offered drugs to be able to get through it because uh, it's in the best interest of say, <laughs> I'm going to use the old classic term of pimpy to basically uh, make sure that uh, his workers uh, can do the job. Because uh, the more they can do the job, the better they get paid. And the mental anguish is not what he's interested in here. So basically uh, if he can uh, offer them drugs and get through it uh, at a small cost and get a return on that, then that's obviously uh, a, a, um, a win for, for him if you look at his objective. It's interesting you highlighted or you picked out that it says that she is drugged. Because that's, yeah, when you put it in that perspective, it might not even be that someone else is doing it to her. Because it talks about, and you'll probably get to this, she has a son and she's unable to pay for her son just by living on the dole, so she has to go out at night and do this. So maybe it's not even that someone else is doing it to her, she's doing it to herself in order to get through the night in order to be able to do that. Yes, it's like a set of circumstances set up that if she had a different environment, she'd probably choose something differently. But based on the constraints and the environment she's put within and the offers that are available it sets her up in a situation where it's kind of she takes it maybe somewhat unconsciously. Um, so, yeah, so she, like you said, she might be doing it herself, but the way in which the environment's being set up, it's like free. Uh, it makes her feel good because uh, she's not happy with what she's, she's doing. Uh, she has to do what she's doing because it's the only way she understands how to make or uh, at this point uh, figures out how to make money. Um, so you get in this kind of cycle. Um, 
So yeah. one yeah. thing I like about this song, even I mean, you remind me of it, and we're just talking about that, is that it's very ambiguous. A lot of it is left up to your imagination, how you interpret what they say. They don't spell it out for you. This is why it is this way. They just give you the scenario and leave it up to you to think about, okay, why might it be that way? Because, yeah, like, like you said, when, when you're talking about that she's being drugged, it's hearing the rest of her story. I, I interpret that more as, oh, she's doing that to herself in order to get through it rather than someone mm-hmm. doing it to help her you know, in order to profit from it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I guess, I mean, both of them are, are really good takes and I don't think it's uh, it's not either or. It's it's actually a combination. I would say, yes, her, she's the one at the end of the day agreeing to do that or to take those things. But um, if she was in a different work environment, it wouldn't be, nece- you know, professional environment just really wouldn't necessarily be offered. Uh, she'd be doing it during the day so she wouldn't have to stay awake and like there'd be a whole different set of circumstances based on the environment so um yeah anyway it's a it's, it's good to do and then it uh, maybe as we've so we've created like a bit of a character here she's a stripper she's obviously um trying to deal with life by taking drugs um she's working at night she has a, a son at home that's dependent so on the doll so i'm assuming that he's old enough to have been out there he might have um uh, so from anyone for anyone listening in other countries oh, yes. the doll is yes. what would you call it like welfare would yes. be the general term for it yeah. yes so yeah so the son's on welfare so i'm assuming he's over 18 and still living at home um now it could be that uh, he's he is or she is uh, she's on the doll her son her son is on oh, okay yeah her son's on the doll so i'm assuming it's uh, her son uh so i'm guessing she's probably had a kid uh, maybe in her early teens. Um, and then what's happened is she's hang around the wrong crowd. She's figured out the easiest way to get cash to try and be dependent on herself. And then she's maybe got to sort of 30, 35 and her son's become of age. And so he's now on the dole. And so they're following the same cycle, I guess. Um, he's unable to get work. He might be taking drugs and doing other things as well to earn, maybe selling and stuff like that as well. Um, so this one's sort of setting up not only her character, but also the cycle which is being set and that's making it hard for her to get out of this cycle, I guess. Um, if you've, yeah, it, it's, it's one thing to sit back and say, oh, you should just, you shouldn't do this, but it's, it's another thing to understand what patterns and behaviours get taught at an early age and how hard they are to break. As you get older and older, um, yeah. Uh, so that that's the sun, and then I think what it sort of ends up going is this is where we go back to the old man's perspective, where she see he sees him as a lovely lady and a bit tired, and says something to him, and he he doesn't really understand. Um, she's like on edge, and she basically uh, sees the old man staring at her, and maybe partly because of her environment or her job, she takes an interpretation. She's like he's looking at it, I guess, sexually. And then uh, she's like, uh, sort of says to her, you know, um, what you what you staring at? So, you know, what the hell are you staring at kind of thing? Um, and I think that's really interesting how there are two different takes on it. Um, so at this point she's just edgy and, and, and worried and like finished work and this guy, guy staring at her and doesn't want, to, uh, doesn't want anything, a bar of soap of him. And then all of a sudden once uh, the younger people come on and, and put an uh, – before you get to that. Sorry. No, that's that's all right. I just wanted to, because that really stood out to me as well, that point where she says, which is like, what, what, what are you staring at? What the hell are you staring at? Because in his verse, in the old man's verse at the start, he, it says that she reminds him of his deceased wife and that's why he smiled at her. And then she comes on and, yeah, she's like, what the hell are you staring at? Which kind of sets her up to be this, like, I don't know, aggressive person that doesn't, care about other people type of thing. Like that's how it's suggested to me, which again, which is where you're leading to at the moment. So do you want to continue from that? Yeah, good good point. I'm glad that you sort of interrupted then because, yeah, you're right. The character's being set up that they're just of no value, drug taker, stripper, aggressive. And then what will end up happening, what ends up happening is the young guys come on, they put the, the knife to the old guy, um, ask for his money, and she basically steps in at this point. And uh, she could have fled the, like I think they say something about fled the cart, uh, fled the train and I think uh, a lot of people would be in this situation where they see something they look at the risk they go oh, I'm not it's not me uh, so they're not willing to take the risk and they either turn a blind eye or shoot off she has the guts to turn around and, and face them and she actually gets uh, hit in the process 
Um, and I think that that sort of breaks the stereotype which you first presented with, which you, which you sort of stepped in and sort of highlighted. And I, I guess I really like this part because um, I think often, too often I've seen, I think I've sort of <laughs> spent a life around very diverse set of characters and too often I see um, uh, particularly low socioeconomic people or rough looking characters being uh, completely taken, the, the assumptions about them are completely taken, are, are incorrect. And often it's assumptions about people that have never actually spent any time with these kind of people before. And uh, what I found in life is those that are sort of uh, down in the dumps and are a bit more rougher is they actually generally have a lot more compassion. And it always makes me feel that um, um, that's kind of half, sometimes that's part of the battle because they are so giving uh, they get taken advantage of. So, you know, uh, whereas other people that are more powerful and, and able to, you know, gain a bit of wealth and independence and all the rest of it, they're thinking of themselves in those situations. So they set everything up so that they're going to take it, um, they're going to uh, uh, sort of win out in this life, I guess. Whereas those that are down in the dumps and and a bit rough and rugged and, and, and at the bottom of the uh, economic chain, I guess, it, what you generally find is they'll just give you anything like food or if they say you you know, without uh, a, a jumper or something and it's and it's and you're out in the cold or whatever, you know, they might give you a jacket or they're just very compassionate. And I guess that sometimes might um, be an impact to why uh, they find it hard to to um, to advance in, in life because it's a very individual uh, world we're living in at the moment, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. I've got some friends who would, from the outside, they seem like they'd be really hard, really harsh, unwelcoming. But as soon as you get to know them a little bit, you realize like they're the, some of the most compassionate people that you can know. They're very sensitive, very giving, very emotional people. And I wonder if that sensitivity is what leads them to be harsh because like people can easily take advantage of that. So they have to kind of put up that shield first. But as soon as you get past that, you realize, oh, hang on a second. They're actually, there's a lot going on there. Yes. So I like that you brought that up. And they generally have your back. So I think this is what's actually happening here is those people. And, and that's sometimes, I guess, not only the aggression is, like you said, the defensive, but I guess at some point when you're such a compassionate person, you see so many people taken care of, there are points which you just want to snap and just hang on, what the, you know, what are you doing here and, and, and step in. And I think this is what's happening here. It's like this lady, she's set up as this kind of uh, character, maybe worthless character or aggressive character. And what you're seeing here is now she's like when, when, the, when something really happens, She's the one that's going to step in. She's the one that's actually going to say something and, and put her life on the line. And and that's what you find about those characters as well, I think. Um, they have your back and they're usually raw and trustworthy. And yeah. Just to once again step through what happens in the in this song, the sequence. The the young man, which we haven't got to yet, comes on, puts a knife to the old man. The woman steps in, tries to help out the old man. She gets knocked down because of it. And then there's a line like directly after that where they say, ain't it amazing how courageous human beings are? Yes. And this line, when I heard it the first time, that it was really like a gut punch. And I was, and I, just while you were talking about it now, I kind of sort of figured out, okay, I understand why that hit me so much. Because they do set her up to be this, you know, low, worthless person who's aggressive towards others, aggressive towards the old man. And as someone who a lot of people... I feel from my perspective, interpret my actions. Like if I was to smile at someone, they'll be a bit scary, maybe scared or a bit worried because I'm a bit taller. Like I'm sitting down, but even you can tell <laughs> between me and Mick, I'm a little bit taller than him. So I might look aggressive, but if, you know, most of the time I just want to share a little bit of happiness, you know, smile at someone, bring a little brightness, but people are worried because of that. So that I kind of connected with the old man there where it's like, oh, he had no malicious intent here. He was just, you know, smiling at this lady that reminded him of his wife. He, he was even, he wasn't even really doing it to her. He was doing it because he felt a certain way yeah. himself. So yeah. And then to have her be aggressive towards him because of that. And then just to see the reversal where she's like about to almost giving her life for him. And again, after they set her up that, you know, she's got a son, she's, she's doing all these things. She's already doing it hard and she's willing to give that up for this old man that, you know, she was so rude to kind of, when she first met him, I don't know, that really got to me. And that's like why I said, again, the line where they say, ain't it amazing how courageous human beings are? 
Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. That line is uh, definitely stands out. Just, um, yeah, how, how courageous they are. And, like, just the flip on her, her side as well. Like, I think that's also a really good point where she's – maybe there's a flip between emotional and actually someone – uh, knowing their own faults as well. Like, so she's taken a judgment and even though she thinks this person might have been a bit sleazy in this in this moment, she still doesn't want to punish that person and go, oh, well, he deserved it. Like, you know, from her interpretation, she could basically say, well, he deserved it. You know, he was looking at me sleazy, sleazy so he needs to cop it, but she didn't. She actually had compassion for the individual at that point in time, um, which you would never have first expected from her i guess the way in way in which she first described yeah and i only heard this song because you recommended it to me and you i know you were really really liked it and I, the first time i listened to it, i didn't really get it but when actually listening to it again and listening to the lyrics i understand oh, okay there's a lot of depth here like we can see when we're talking about it so are you ready to move on from the woman yeah yes do you yes. want to because i know you want to talk about the chorus do you want to talk about that now or do you want to talk about that after i was thinking about chorus? that what i might do is just uh, at the last uh, at the end of it i think i would just want to and it won't be that long but just talk a little bit about the environment there's a few little things that i think add to uh so they describe each of the characters really well but i think the the chorus sort of adds a little bit to the environment and and maybe the first line, um, which we haven't spoken about, which actually got removed from the second version as well. Yep. Okay. So then happy to move on to the last character, which I've termed here young man because we have old man. I don't know. It doesn't really suggest how old he is. Actually, you could – he's definitely over, say, like 18 because of some of the things that it says about him. So I've got here – I'll actually talk – from my perspective and again this verse changes between the two versions so we're sticking to the original version here and then maybe afterwards we'll talk about the restrung version and what the differences are because this is the only character that really changes between the two so coming into the train it focuses on there's a line that says he's what is it? he's struggling through toil strife and hard yakka something like that the next line on from that, I think, is something about how his wife is in the slammer, he's in jail. So it's already setting this guy up as as showing you, okay, there's things going on in his life that are, you know, issues. You know, he, he's 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 already got troubles of his own. Uh, he was never given life on a damn platter. That's another line from him. And then, yeah, so that leads into him coming up to the old man. And I can't remember, does it say why he attacks him uh no so i will just quickly recap on one of the lines that i think may have slightly uh misinterpreted so playing wife in a slammer so he's actually been to prison and he's been taken advantage of as a prison so my guess is he you're correct he's over 18 and so what's happened or at some point like so this is something i think uh, uh is really important to say at this point in time so my guess is he's been abused as a child in a lot of different ways. My guess is he's entered the criminal system probably as a teenager, um, particularly if playing wife in a slammer. My guess is that, uh, and again, this is all interpretation, but is that uh, he was probably like a fish, a young, a young person that, and some sometimes I think in different uh, states in Australia and probably different places in the world, uh, teenagers can enter adult prisons. So I think in um, in Queensland still, and I need to be corrected on the exact details of this, I think it might be 16. You can be 16 and be in an adult prison. So you can imagine being a 16-year-old in a, in, a, in a prison with 25-year-olds and uh, criminal, everything from, you know, hardened criminals to uh, physically violent people and all sorts. So at this point he's actually um, playing wife in Islam is a really important line to say that he's being taken advantage of. Um, yeah, that's a good pickup. Thank you for bringing that up because I didn't interpret it that way or I didn't hear it that way or read it that way. That actually makes it a lot worse. Like it makes his situation a lot worse. It does suggest that he's been taken advantage of in prison. Yeah, sorry. And probably <laughs> even that. earlier, like through his family, yeah. upbringing, all the rest of it. So, and then it sort of starts to set a scene. So you can see like knife and bandana with boys at his back. Um, so you can see like he's in this group. You can imagine him being all confident and and probably at a at an age where he can, you know, he's learned to take physical control of situations 
probably from his upbringing. So he figures out, oh, well, okay, the world, this is how I interact with the world. If I need something, I go get it and all the rest of it, that no one's going to give it to me. Um, and it hasn't really uh, been taught the value of like probably working and uh, respect and all the rest of it as well. I mean, you just don't when you abuse as a child there's you know and it can be physical sexual or or emotional abuse but i would say this one's probably going to be physically and sexually abused so you can see already this character that's actually going to rob this guy um um and i think this is important is that immediately he is the perpetrator in this situation he's the one that's um causing a problem in this situation but if you just step back an extra layer you might understand he's also not the perpetrator he's a victim so uh, what I think is important that's often missed in our world today is that victims can end up being perpetrators. Um, in a lot of cases, they are per- they, victims convert into perpetrators because that's how they've been treated. So it's either, uh, I can't think of the line, but it's either, uh, what is it, die or, or uh, kill kind of thing. So it's like uh, if he ha- in his mind, he has to either be a victim and not kind of defend himself or... He becomes the perpetrator and take control of himself kind of thing. Um, and there's a whole lot of rationale to why that isn't actually a good mindset to be in, but just sit in the young person's mindset and sit from his life. That's obviously not, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but if you look from his perspectives, that that's kind of his choices in his, his mind. Um, and then, so he's in this sort of hunting mindset. Okay. Um, and I think it goes down that he hasn't had a, uh, a nod. Uh, he hasn't been on the nod uh, for, for a day or something. So the nod is like, um, which we'll get back to the environment, the nod is like when you take. Is that this version or is that the restrung version? Uh, it could be the restrung. Hang on, let me have a look. Okay, so it could possibly be the restrung version actually. I think it is. I don't think it really yeah. gives him a reason to rob the old man in this one. Okay, okay. Again, but you can see what there's like five or six lines there that give you this rich picture of what the history of this person will be. And like you said, yeah, that's how I interpret as well. It's like it's setting this guy up is himself a victim, even though he's the clear perpetrator in this situation. He has gone through a lot in life. Like all of these characters really have gone through a lot in life. They're all coming from the same base. It's just like where it ends up and what roles they play change. Yes, Yes, and I'd like to at the end to recap on something about it, uh, being a war veteran along that line too. But um, but anyway, yeah. So and now he's ready to uh, yeah. So he's in this mode of like okay, he's taking mode, uh, survival in his mind like a survival mode. So he's looking for someone to take cash from, um, and uh, and yeah, he finds the old man, I guess. Um, um, and I don't know if you want to continue anything from there because there's an ending of this uh, verse which I think is also really interesting, uh, uh, important as well. Um, so maybe, yeah, we've set it up to go over it all again and then we'll cap it off with uh, how it ends, in, at least in the original version, is the old man boards the train. He's already had issues getting on the train, dealing with the technology. He's been fined. He's got dementia. He's a uh, pensioner. His wife's died. This lady gets on the train, he smiles at her and then this young man gets on the train, puts a knife to the old man and goes to rob him. So we've covered all them. So he goes to rob him. The woman steps up, tries to help out the old man, but the young man knocks him down. And then, yeah, so maybe go on, finish it off. What's the ending of at least this version? Yeah, uh, knocks her down. And, uh, yeah, so the alternative is, uh, what is it, take your heart or your cash basically. So he's going to stab him or, or take his cash. And uh, in this version, basically um, the old man gets stabbed uh, and uh, lays on the floor of the train. Um, I think if I'm right, it says that once the woman gets knocked down, the old man steps in to help her uh, out yes, and then point. the yes. knife goes through him. Yes. Because following on from that, he gets stabbed. The young man takes the money and they run. It says that the young man himself has never gone that far and he is regretful of, of his actions. He's like, oh, you know, what happened? What, why did I do that? Or, Well, I'm actually putting words in his mouth there, but he's at least considering his conscious of it wasn't just, oh, that's fun. Let's go and stab someone. It was that went way too far. Yes. So thank you for filling in that little gap of um, 
uh, when she stepped in and then he stepped up and he's the one that copped the, copped the knife because uh, I was sort of jumping towards the end. But, yes, at the end, he, I think what's really interesting is he's um, concerned about the loss of life. He never went this as far. Um, but then he sort of goes, uh, what's done is done. He's got the prize kind of thing. And it was $2 in a pension card. I love the end of that kind of say, saying because it's like, he took such extraordinary action. He was such on edge and being in such an emotional state and, you know, looking for something to take. And he wasn't really – he was in the moment, not thinking of any of the consequences. And um, and then he has this sort of moment, which I think we all have at certain points, where it's like you go, oh, I know something's – I've done something wrong here. I've, I've gone too far here in his case. But because of the scenario and because of the event, he just – it's a fleeting – it's like a fleeting thought and then he passes it off. Oh, well, what's done is done kind of thing. Okay, uh, what's done is done. And so that's how he's dealt with. What's interesting is this what's done is done. If you strip it back to the victim mentality, if you're abused, what you generally try to do is to forget the past. Right? And so he's using a behavior or a survival technique, which he's learned a lot probably. I'm taking a lot of interpretation here probably a lot as a as a victim as a as a teenager or a child and he's applying that to the mentality of of being a perpetrator in this state so he's using that same technique to oh okay uh it, this is a really bad thing that's happened i'm just going to ignore it i'm just going to uh not worry about it kind of thing and just move forward and uh yeah so then he ends up um <laughs> getting two dollars and, and a pension card and Probably just ends up, I mean, it doesn't really say how it ends up, but you probably can see him just throwing out. And he's, now he's still got to go find that money, I guess. Um, so that's not going to make, that's only going to make him more agitated and probably more risky character to, to go find someone else to take cash from. Um, yeah. That's great the way you put that. What's done is done. I didn't see it that way at all. But yeah, it all ties together when you do look at it. Like, even if that's not how they intended it to be interpreted, you could logically work your way through and and through examples and seeing people that you know go through it you could see that that's how it is that yeah it suggests that throughout life they've had this mentality oh well it's done let's move on instead of hang on let's reflect on it and see what can we change so that doesn't happen again in the future so very well done Mick. all right where do you want to go from here do you want to jump to the next one do you want to cover the chorus first um, I think the chorus is, is good because then we don't have to worry about the uh, chorus in the last one. And I guess then it fills a whole sort of the whole song because um, I think there's some – I'm, I'm going to pull the chorus, but there's also a particular part at the, the, the start I think sets a really good scene. I keep knocking this mic. But um, uh, so at the start of the original song, uh, which really takes uh, – if you've ever been catching trains a, a lot, it really takes you to the environment. Like it's like um, – I can imagine like it's not it's not PSD TD in my case, but you can imagine like uh, you know the classic case of where they hear a chopper and they takes them back to the to, to a war environment, I guess. So for me, when I hear um, it's sort of like uh, over the PA that the train's stopping at Adelaide and will depart from platform one, uh, but it does it over a PA in a very raw how it would actually be captured at the train station. They probably did record it from the train station, and I think that to me like. Just not the not the words, but the way in which it's presented on the PA and everything takes me back to actually catching trains and sets the scene up for me, having gone through the experience of seeing all these different characters and sometimes it's risky. Catching trains at night's always risky as well. And and uh, yeah, so it sort of sets the scene. Um and then um there's well, yeah, the chorus which is uh there's a bit of scratching on the on the on the Maybe pad. Maybe you can read it out or sing it. It's yeah. not very long, so. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to read it out, and I think it's really there's a few points that I'd, I'd like to take. So, uh, so it's like taking a train, taking a train. I head towards the train station, riding the caboose to hell. So caboose is like a um, a carriage in the in the train, I think. Um, and uh, we're in. A, I love this line. We're in a city. We're we're from a city heroin loves. The devil's in charge. So one of the things that uh, this is from my own experience as well. So one of the things growing up um, around train stations, in actually I went through uh, there was a heroin epidemic in the 90s, um, in, in particularly in, in Australia, I think Victoria anyway, I don't know the other states, 
but I remember so much so that in the papers they'll actually measuring the deaths of from heroin against car crashes. So and they were I think at po- certain points heroin was actually above. There was more deaths from heroin than there were from people dying from car crashes and things like this. And I actually had uh, a few uh, close. Uh, members of my family which were cousins that I used to hang around with and they um, unfortunately got lost in this in this area as well so I kind of it signals uh, to me some personal characters that are piece of people that I know and how they lost themselves to this so I think uh, when I read city heroin loves we're from a city that heroin loves so heroin if you think about what drugs does, particularly heroin, it sort of knocks you out and gives you like this. Um, I've never t- personally taken it, but from from what I understand, it sort of knocks you out and sort of uh, what, do, what do they call it? Like a not a suppressor, but sedative. Thank you. It's like a sedative, but one in which you uh, the world is amazing. Kind of when you go in this uh, unconscious state, it's all just a, a great feeling. And whenever you watch someone, it's like they're, uh, particularly when they're there, they sort of go on this nods thing. Like they might even hold a cigarette and drop it and then they'll wake up and all the rest of it. And then going through that experience. And what it's doing is it's suppressing a lot of pain. Suppressing a lot of, I think why individuals take it is generally because it's suppressing a lot of pain that they don't want to deal with. And so uh, we're from a city heroin loves. It's like, ah, the city, the people in the city are in a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. So then the heroin comes through and just, yeah, spreads like a disease. It spreads like a disease and impacts all these people that um, they probably wouldn't do certain things if they weren't impacted by this. And then it says the devil's in charge. So it's like what ends up the result of spreading this heroin through like a disease and actually uh, impacting these people in uh, giving these people that are in pain relief is um, uh, at the other side of that there's a there's a a, a, a um, really uh, a personality or or people that wouldn't do what they would normally do so you know heroin at that point was really expensive so and it was illegal so that's what causes all the crime and and people to go and run around and and uh, take cash like uh, and because more you know as you get more accustomed to it. Uh, I don't know um, the tolerance, how well it builds over time, but they get more and more tolerant. They have to take more and more. It costs them more and more. So, you know, uh, uh, something like this could cost someone that's taken it for a while, two or 300 bucks a day, um, how they're going to get their money when they can't even really walk around. You know, they can't really look after themselves. The only way they do it is they take. Um, so, yeah. Interpreting the song in the way you did, it's all – the same thing every verse every chorus is the same thing it's someone who's in hard troubles who's trying to escape it the two of them are definitely through drugs the woman and the uh young man it doesn't say about the old man maybe he is like maybe that's how he's dealing with whatever issues he's going through or whatever but yeah the city that heroin loves so everyone's struggling everyone's dealing with that or a lot of people are dealing with that through drugs because they maybe don't know how to any other way like whatever we can talk about in another episode maybe the system's keeping them down, maybe, you know, whatever it is, that pattern that's keeping them all like that. And then that's leading to the devil being in charge, like they're giving into their worst nature yes. because of that. Yes. And I think uh, you're right about the two characters. I think what's interesting about the war veteran is um, I like that it's a war veteran. So this is a difficult topic to navigate because it has a lot of emotion tied to it. So if you think about war veterans, what do they do? They go over and uh, into an generally either defend their own country or they go and attack another country, right? And there's been a lot of wars, uh, at least that uh, in probably the last, uh, well, I'm going to say 50 years that I kind of know a little bit about. And I think that some of those, well, in a lot of states, those wars have, from a high level, taking advantage of a country. Um, so, um, and that's a, another podcast in itself. But I think the interpretation of what a veteran is, some people interpret people that have gone to war as kind of criminals, like murderers, and other people interpret them as heroes. And so one thing that played in my mind that I, uh, it's a bit uncomfortable to, to think this way, but I, um, it makes me go, you know, we don't know what kind of soldier he was. We don't know, um, you know, did he take advantage of being a soldier at a point in time? Did he abuse and and uh, take power over people that weren't uh, necess- like civilians? 
because in, in war-torn countries, it's a little bit like the police. You give them, uh, you know, at a very often at a very early age, a lot of power. And, uh, I mean, murder in any other situation is considered a crime, but when you become a soldier, it's part of, it's uh, for some soldiers, it's part of their job. Um, and so where do you draw the line of murder in that job? And uh, for some Soldiers, they're a hero because they draw that line really well. They take out the bad guy, I guess, and again, bad guy, inverted commas. Um, um, and so in some cases, people can see veterans as hero and a definite, a definite necessity of resource. And I, as I've got older, I sort of still battle with exactly what it means to have a military and everything and, and when to execute and all the rest of it. But um uh, a thought does enter in my mind that um, about karma. Did did he, you know, did he as a young soldier, you know, there's been reports of soldiers raping and 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 physically abusing civilians and all the rest of it. We don't know if he did or didn't. On the face value in this song, I think he's probably a fairly wound, rounded individual and very compassionate. But did he learn that from when he was younger? Was he someone that uh, went through pain and and did the wrong thing and and because uh, as a young particularly I think as a young guy, there's there's boundaries which you push as a younger guy that you realise that are not actually beneficial to yourself or anyone else. And uh, did that actually happen or was he actually a very nice veteran and war hero? Um, so I'd like to throw that in there just to say that, like you said, each character has their story and probably has gone through all their pains and you don't know, you know, he might have been a drug addict at some point um, to deal with atrocities that he that he may have done in, in war times that's a great example and way of looking at it to highlight why the ambiguity of the lyrics is actually uh in service to the song it really helps you think and you can see these people in these different lights and maybe that's even promoting the message of look you don't know anything just because they have these they've been through these things in their life that doesn't say anything about who they are you need to actually really know them and get to know them to understand who they are is there anything else in the original version before no, we move on? I think that's it. So that actually leads very well into why personally, and I think you're the same, I prefer the original version over the um, restrung. They call it restrung, remixed version, whatever you want to call it, the updated newer version. The original version, like I was just saying, is very ambiguous. It allows you to interpret the characters however you like. This one what's the word disambiguously like it, it removes that kind of in the last verse it makes them a bit more solid and a lot more cartoony and superficial and surface level at least that's how i see it so do you want to introduce it do you want to talk about what are the differences and yeah how does it change the meaning of the song yeah i think it changed there's two things i think they really tried to do at this point um and uh you did pick it up because i have highlighted it here which is uh, they do give him a clear uh, – so in the first one they didn't actually make that he'd been on drugs very clearly, but in this they, they, they do make it very clear that he's been on the nod since the morning. And So just know, to be clear, the young man has been – Sorry, yeah. yes. So this is the third verse. This is about the young man. So the first two characters remain basically the same, the old man and the the lady or the woman or whatever we call them. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, but the third, the third character, the character that actually uh, was the aggressor, the perpetrator, the one with the knife taking the money, um, they're, they're filling his background a little bit differently here. So uh, they're not referencing um, his hard life. They're not referencing necessarily uh, that, that thing about the prison that I was talking before, but they're saying he's on drugs and he's, um, he needs to touch the God of face and his skin's crawling. So, you know, he's, he's really on edge. And I think then the second thing they sort of add in here, which is um, I kind of wonder, <laughs> this is like a politically correct question and I completely agree with it. So like they add in here that it's not good to hit women. I think that's really the message at the end, um, which they're trying to do. And then the old guy comes in and bees the hero and, and uh, he. So just before you get to that, because the, the sequence of events actually changes a little bit, can you just – or oh, maybe I'll go over it actually. So the young man jumps on the train. He's itching for a fix. He grabs the old man. Similarly, the lady steps up. He knocks the lady to the ground. Now he actually, he's a lot more aggressive in this and he says some things in here that make him seem a lot more evil. 
but I'll stick to the key points. But he knocks the woman down, but then the old man steps up and he actually overcomes the young man and he knocks the blade down and then he gives him a lecture about how to act in the world. So this yes. is kind of where you were getting to. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you've done a good job of overviewing it. Um, and, yeah, so I'm, I was, guess, going through the details. Um, yeah, so at this point that's that's kind of what they changed. They changed that, I guess, it is a political message. It's like uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't hit women, of course, or it's a, a political message. Yeah, I think that's the right term anyway, or a moral moral message, I guess. Maybe it's a that's a better way of stating it. it's a moral message. I think we all agree. Uh, well, you shouldn't hit women, but you shouldn't really hit anyone, to be honest. Um, but women in particular, because obviously um, there is a physical difference between men, men and women. Um, well, as it depends we, how PC you want to go know. with it. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> this is a this is a difficult I topic say, to talk about. Yeah. They, they specifically say you shouldn't lay hands on women here, yeah, but I would say in general, like just you shouldn't lay hands on people yes. in general. Yes. It's kind of, yeah, let's not, let's not wade too deep into <laughs> how we separate people. Yes. Yes. So yeah, in this case, and, uh, and then the old man is like the hero at the end to take, takes control of the situation. Like you said, gives a lecture, you know, about, um, he didn't fight for the country to, for this behavior to occur. And, um, you know, it's, it, uh, he would rather have his, uh, he'd rather take the blade than um, see his country uh, with behaviour like this. So it was a bit like of a lecture at the end. So like there's a moral and a lecture at the end, which is really about uh, not hitting women. But I agree with you. Like it should be about, at the end of the day, it's about not hitting people. Um, yeah. Treat so, everyone with respect, I think. Yes. But in here they've done it about women. And I think the whole point about women was that they must have done it about women separate from people. And I think, it's kind of that the perspective is that uh, they're more vulnerable, I guess. Could be. Could also be that putting into context, the old man's probably from a bygone era where that yes. was more of a that's the way they looked at it. Instead of thinking, okay, let's just treat everyone with respect, it was more like, no, you treat them. Ah, uh, that's a very good point, actually. So yeah, you're right. So if I take the the older generation, um, I guess the the distinguishing differences between the gender was a little bit different than what we probably know today. So, yeah, if you take it from that uh, perspective, um, that's probably why they've separated out the... And, and a woman did get hit, but he gave a very lecture that he shouldn't hit women. And I think that's a common common uh, saying that we've said for, for a long period of time. But um, Let's jump back to the top of this verse because I want to actually go through how it changes the young man to make him completely unsympathetic, in my opinion, completely cartoony, like over-the-top villain, just like I said, superficial gives him very little depth and it really surprises me because especially since they keep the rest of the song the same. So it's like there's a lot of depth in these two characters at the start and then at the end you just jump to, oh, he's a one-dimensional person, he's on drugs, he's violent, he wants to take advantage of other people. One of the, So one of the lines, these peeps are just sheep, time to fleece the market. Yes. So that's how he's looking, at the, the guy's looking at everyone else on the train. The He knocks the girl down. Uh, it says a girl steps, he's like, eat the carpet. So he's like yeah, actually yeah. saying, you know, stay down or, you know, that's where I guess when the old man comes in saying you shouldn't put hands on a woman, it's because he's so violent towards her. Whereas in the original, he just, he knocks her out of the way. He doesn't, it's because she's trying to protect the old man. So he just wipes her out of the way, but he doesn't, he doesn't look at her and say, you know, you're a fool or, or say anything towards it. He's just like, she's an obstacle in my way. Get out of the way and then go for the old man. So yeah, there's just, is there anything else in there that kind of makes you feel like he's more of a, or do you agree with me? Does, does the young man come across as more cartoony, more superficial, more evil? I think you've actually done a better job than me in actually pulling this out. Um, I feel that maybe for me, I ignored some of this because it didn't really come truth to me. So it's sort of like, oh, it's just like, I've, I've, I uh, guess I'd, didn't analyze it as, as as in depth, but you're right. I think you're right in the fact that it is a cartoon character. He's just seen as a drug addict. Like even the peeps are sheep, time to fleece, and women. That's all about vulnerability. So he's just looking for the vulnerability. He's an aggressor. Um, so he's. I think how it's really changed in here is like you said. He's now become the v really clear villain, and there's a real clear hero. And this is very Americanized. Uh, or. Uh, that's that's the way I see it from the holy maybe Americanized not the right way maybe but the Hollywood or Westernized or it's the classic sort of Disney or Hollywood kind of thing where there's a villain and there's a hero and the and the villain 
it's very clear the, in the wrong and the hero is clearly in the right and then the hero comes in and saves the day. Um, and then there's like a, this moral or this story that you need to get out of it that's very clear cut. And the other thing is like you were brought up in, in the previous version about the old man, you could, it doesn't necessarily say that he's a person who should be admired. You don't know what he did in war just because he's a veteran, he could have done bad things or, you know, it's, it's unclear. Here it's suggesting a lot more that he's more of the hero type. So again, it re- strips back that ambiguity yes. in the lyrics and it says it suggests, no, this person is this way. And I think they, I don't know why they did it. I guess at the end of the day, they tried to leave the song on a, on a good note. And um, it's a shame because the song is about life. And uh, I think often we try and idolise life as it needs to all be good. And we don't always recognise that it is just a roller coaster road of full of grey, I guess. And uh, that's what I really liked about the first, the first take on this song is it's really raw. It's really ambiguous. It's kind of you have to take your own interpretations. Each character you can kind of have some sympathy with um, from different angles. Um, whereas I think you you're right in that um, this last way in which they presented it, you don't really there's no sympathy for the the last character. There's no victim like he's there's no one here. Uh, maybe you could say he's a victim with the drugs, but even that is a very if you say someone's on drugs, generally the response is for the majority of people is that it's their own fault. But once you go through the history of the person being on drugs and maybe they started taking those drugs when they were 12 because they were being abused, you start to realise, oh, hang on, it's actually not a clear-cut answer um, and they've removed that. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it I mean, really, it's still, still a good song but <laughs> yeah, it sort yeah, of took true. it off from me. It really just undercuts the depth in the rest of the song. Like I... I I really don't understand why they changed it, especially so much. All right, maybe you want to change it so it's a little bit of a lighter ending. I get that. But to change it so drastically, to make it so cartoony, over the top, clear, good and bad guy, it's just, I, I lose interest when I when they turn it into that, to be honest. It, it really, it feels a lot less true to me. Authentic. Yeah. The mm. first song you, you, you listen, the first version you listen to and it's like, oh yeah, I get it. In every single one of those characters I saw, the struggles that they were going through, I felt it. I'm like, oh, I see. Even though the the young man took it a bit too far at the end, I can understand from his perspective. Oh, he's gone through hard times. I can f- feel compassion for him, sympathy for him, real easy because they've set him up in that way. But in this one, they just remove all of that and I'm like, no. Nah. And I think it takes away one of the messages which I get from these songs is that we're all struggling. Mm. It doesn't matter our backgrounds. Everyone's struggling. Everyone's dealing with something. And so... I don't know. I take away from that. Why? Why then are we hurting each other? Why are we harming each other? We're all struggling. Our struggles may be different. We've got different experiences, but everyone's going through some stuff. Why not then lend a hand to the other people? Maybe that's a way they could have changed it to make it a bit more, I don't know, lighter at the end. Somehow they end up helping each other out mm. instead of one person fighting another and giving them a lecture. Yeah, uh, that would have been interesting if even a little bit of experience of the war veteran and what he went through to tell the old person he sort of uh, to the, tell the younger guy he knows what state he's in, even though it's not the right state, he knows what state it is in, um, and having a little bit of sympathy there. I think you're right. I think that um, the more I think about this, I think I've actually ignored this second version of the song probably too much to be honest. And now I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm gaining a better insight to why I dislike it. Um, to me, this kind of, um, this kind of thing, it's like, it takes the, it reinforces people's perspectives about segregating. Uh, It's, uh, how can I say this? It's like, uh, I feel like there's a responsibility here to show the story, like you said, from all the different perspectives and not have a weight against someone that they're good or bad. And to just show that they're all struggling. And once you, now that they've actually shown that two people are struggling, but this one is really the villain, they've actually done a disservice in that what that allows is see, like other people that haven't gone through these experiences, see they are, they are worthless. They are useless. Uh, They shouldn't have any compassion or empathy or, or a helping hand. And so uh, now there's only, if I think about this from like a, just a people and a cross, cross distribution, out of three people, now we're going to only look after two because the third one's uh, completely a villain and should be um, 
should be reprimanded almost. And that's not to say that his actions weren't reprimandable, but you can reprimand, you can give someone consequences and still support them. I think that's the difference is that, um, you know, uh, giving someone consequences and then throwing them away from society is not going to end up well in the long run uh, because they know what not to do, but they don't really know what to do. And so um, particularly it's so well ingrained from, from, from such an early age. So, you know, this one sort of, I guess, just throws that person out and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, talking about it, I'm starting to dislike it even more <laughs> than I did, like <laughs> going in depth about it. Mm. Similar to what you said to me, it just suggests it, it's it reinforces surface level thinking. It's like mm. we're just going to see this person as black or white, just binary two choices. Instead, of, it removes that gray, all of that in between, and that that's something that I, you know, I'm always rallying against. So no, the gray is there. Let's let's explore the gray. There's not. It's not just one way or the other. I mean, this whole podcast, the whole reason we're doing this is to help people. You know look at things or to suggest that maybe let's consider things on a deeper level from different perspectives and, you know, take all different sides into account. Stop putting people into boxes, into categories, you know, whereas this is kind of doing that saying, no, nope, this person's good. This person's bad. The good person has to overcome the bad person. Yes. I would say if I was ha have a little scale and you had a scale of inclusiveness and segregation, it went from a very inclusive slong, song to starting to slide against, segregation being a little bit divisive definitely and like i said the other reason that makes it, it the, the restrung version itself a, uh, a worse song is because there is such a separation between the two verses now and the final verse like yeah you've changed your, the way you're coming you're approaching it so drastically it just it doesn't even fit together anymore it kind of feels um, disconnected disjointed yes yes and there was something about the lyrics that uh, I think th th this ends up on wrapping up everything, I think, in general. Uh, so there is something that we, we talked about the city in charge and the heroin and all the rest of it. And then uh, the actual chorus is whatever it takes to justify, whatever ends we make, whatever the price, to the end of life, it's just an observation. So take a ride, we're stopping all stations. So then there's two lines are really cool. It really signifies life in my view. So... Um, so we all, we all do certain justifications. Uh, we all do whatever it takes to, to get our way through life and overcome all the, um, all the hurdles and sacrifices that we have to make and all the rest of it. But at the end of life, so like if you think of summing it all up, it's, it's all just an observation. Like it's just your interpretations and how you, how you're feeling. And then it's like, so take a ride, we're stopping all stations. That to me is like the roller coaster of life, like. It just signals like, yeah, the train. And I'll go back in a very, in my memory experience, it's like being in the trains, you just see so many different things. And it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of, although it's not all happy, it's kind of cool. Very well summed up. You happy to leave it there? Happy to leave it there. Leave it there. All right. So my supplemental song suggestion for this week, uh, it's very, the song is Joyner Lucas's Keep It 100. And I'd suggest Mick, listen to it because it's a bit similar to this where you it follows the path of a hundred dollar bill and through all these different people's lives and like how what they're going through it's a really interesting song and i think it, it really evokes the same a similar feeling to this one so definitely check it out check it out out there and then my quote for today this is from another song but the message is said in everywhere like you'll know it the only thing that keeps us separate is six degrees and that's I got it from uh, the artist is Prozac and the song is called It's Too Late Now. So thanks for joining us for this discussion. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and opinions about the topic we just discussed. As always, be well.